Hi, I'm Vicky. I'm glad you're here. Today I am doing some gel printing on the gel plate and I'm really excited to show you what I've come up with. So I've planned out my piece before I start. I've gone through and found some found textures. This is an egg carton bubble wrap but I have two sizes of it and I've cut them into squares about the size of the ashtray that I have here. This is a crystal ashtray I picked up for five bucks from Crazy Bargain Store at Gaimea. It has this design on the bottom that I can print. It has the exterior design that I can print. And it also has this design here that I can print. So it's a three for one deal. I like that. Uh, my bubble wrap I've cut to square shapes too. So I have this larger shape bubble wrap and a smaller shape here. This one I've cut into a wavy strip and it's got a bit of a sharp edge on it there. I think I'll trim that off. Grab some scissors and just trim that piece. So I don't want it to be a straight line because it reads too obviously as bubble wrap. So I'll cut this bit off too. So this is the shape I've got. My square pieces will play well with this square shape. I also have this shape, which is the bottom of some sort of a cookie box or something, which has these rectangles in it and a soft edge on the outside. I think this could give some interesting marks and a good place to play with the straight lines versus the round shapes. This egg carton's cool because it has a flat shape and then like a donut shape at the bottom so this is going to give us some variety i think that's going to be fun i have some raffia which i love to use for found texture you can just dump that on the plate and you get sorry <laughs> you get the amazing shapes i have a sharp stick for lifting up my pieces i have my brayers set up on a roll off pad of newsprint i have my red baron which i love and i have a princeton catalyst brush which is great for making wavy lines. I have one of these pick combs, which I may or may not use. I'm not sure, it might be a little bit too wide for me. I do like this one for the size of the piece I'm working on. And I have some drywall tape. Now this makes a great stencil. Um, it does have backing on it. So if you peel the backing off, it's really sticky. You wanna leave that backing on it. But what I don't like is the straight lines at the edge. So I'm going to retrofit this for my plate. And again, I'm just going to do curvy lines, which echo that bubble wrap. So just curving with my scissors. This is one of the shapes that I like to use is this undulating curve. So let's see how we go. So it's drywall tape in the Northern Hemisphere. In Australia, we call this gyprock tape or plasterers tape. It has different names, I think. So I buy it from the hardware store. So that's where it comes from. Most of the other finds are either recyclables or from Crazy Bargains in Gaimea, which is my favorite dollar shop that I go to. And there we go. So we've now retrofitted that into a much more organic shape rather than having these straight lines on the edges. And I like that a lot. I actually really like that shape. So I'm going to show you my simple, simple, simple registration. I'm a big believer in keep it simple. I have some um, Q-tips, which we call cotton buds in Australia or earbuds and these are great for picking up anything off the plate that has made a mess. I'm not going to really use them for mark making at this point I don't know. The paints I'm using are Reeves acrylic and I've got a bit of a color scheme going here that I quite like. I wanted some paler colors. Oh I like that. I do have Mars Black, it may or may not come into play, we'll see. And I have this Matisse Professional Artist Colour Fluid Acrylic, just in case I want some more fluid motion. It's a really nice Hansa Yellow Light. So the colours I have here in the Reeves are Thalo Blue, Rose Red, Gold and Lavender. I also have my Liquitex Transparent Mixing White. This is the Professional Heavy Body Acrylic. It's transparent, so it may or may not come into play. I have it there in case. 
but this is going to be the color scheme and I'm kind of liking that. This is gold paint, so it's very metallic and very nice. Uh, or I could actually switch that out for a silver paint if I wanted to. And that would give me a more cool color scheme, more cool colors. But I do like the contrast of the hit of gold against the cool blues and the cool mauves. And then you've got your warm rose. So I think, yep, that's the way I'm going to go. By the way, these... Ikea kids paints are fantastic. This silver and gold are brilliant. I love them. Probably not archival, so if you're selling your work, you probably want to use the professional, sorry, the professional grade paints. I do keep hitting my um, camera there. I'm going to have to be aware that it's closer than it normally is just for getting everything in the shot here. I've put it on uh, 0.25. So it's a different orientation than what I usually use. I'm a left-hander so I orient all my tools to the left and I'll be using my registration off to the right and I'll show you how I register now. Then we can get cracking on making some prints. Okay, so the paper I'm using is cartridge paper, an A3 pad. It's 110 GSM cartridge paper. It's not terribly thick, and it's the sort of paper that if I am to sell this, I would probably frame it. Um, thick watercolor paper is my favorite paper to use for printing because it's easy to lift off, and if it's good quality and it's smooth, you get really beautiful results on your print. Now, already I've got some mess on this piece of paper. I've been fiddling around. I've got dirty marks everywhere, so I'm gonna start with plain piece. So this comes in a pad. I'm just gonna take my top sheet now this is my registration. It's really, really, really simple, I promise. <laughs> so I have my favorite masking tape and I'm going to make a hinge out of this. So each time I lay my paper back down, it's going to be hopefully perfectly registered. So this is the tape I use, it's QZ tape. I use this for my watercolor paintings to make a nice border around the outside and it's great, it doesn't tear the paper. So what I've done, I have a setup here which is a piece of paper the exact size that I'm using for my print. So both papers will line up. I have a glass cutting board to sit my mat on. It's not necessary to have this, you could probably just sit your mat on the paper, but having it like this means I can leave this registration system set up ready to go any time. Now you can see that the gel plate isn't exactly square on all sides. It's a bit wonky and that's part of the charm of it. So you can see the plate is pushed, uh, the cutting plate is pushed down this way and we've got a bit of a strange gap going on here. That's because we have to cater for the width of this glass and the width of the gel plate. So when you test it out what I do is line up paper to paper so we've got our perfect registration going and take a bit of time to get it absolutely exact and what I like to do is once it's in place check with my fingers so we have an edge to edge here and we have an edge to edge here which is about the same so we're at two and a half inches on this side and I can feel the plate. We are at two and a half inches on this side. I can feel the plate. We are at one and a half inches and one and a half inches. There we go. So this isn't perfectly registered. All we need to do to create the hinge is to tape our paper all the way across. You want the whole width. I'm going to keep bumping that on now because please excuse me. Okay, uh, the, you want the whole width across. And you want a nice application of this all the way down. So you just lay it down. And now we have our registration set. So if I, <laughs> here we go, I've got to move that out of the way. I'm working with small amount of space because of my other projects that I've got going here. 
we are going to peel back after we finish printing like so and do our layers and each time we lay it down it is going to land in exactly the same place that is the plan it usually works for me i've never had it fail me unless the tape comes loose and that's all you need for registration how easy is that you don't really need this plate you could put your plate straight onto paper it's just that i like to have this set up so it's good to go whenever i need it and this is this works for me really well i'm going to roll on my first layer i have a damp cloth set up i have a container to dunk my brayers into if i'm taking too long and I'm worried the acrylic paint may dry. My newsprint pad here for rolling off and I keep those newsprint papers. I think they're wonderful. I... All right, let's put more paint. Now I've got this Derivan Matisse Professional Arts Colour. I'm putting down a whole load of paint. I did a first layer and it wasn't enough. So I'm starting again. Full disclosure from the first one. I did not have enough paint on my plate. And it's the first use of the paint, uh, the plate today. Sometimes it takes a little bit of seasoning it with a few pulls of prints before it uh, does what you want it to. Now I am going to actually, oh, I love the look of this. I love the look that my brayer is making. And this is going to be my first layer. Look at that. Oh man, I'm painting with my brayer. Oh, this is fun. This is cool. I'm going to get all the edges and all the sides and the corner. Let's hope this will pull back nicely. Let's put a few little bits and pieces in there now to make it fun. I have my square glad wrap going in. I have my long piece of glad wrap. Uh, not glad wrap, what do you call this stuff? <laughs> bubble wrap, there we go, bubble wrap. Talking and creating is tricky. And I have this fantastic shape I really want to use. This is a this might be hard to get down. This is a an ashtray. Whoa, and it's slippery. So I've got a bit of a slip and a slide happening there. Oh, look at that. So cool. And the other thing I have is my drywall tape. And I'm going to pass this across on the diagonal. It doesn't really matter which side you use. I think this might work really nicely. And I'm going to just use my fingers and tap all that into the plate so we've got lots of action happening there we've got a bit of a composition happening too which i always like to do think about while i'm doing it okay and i'm going to remove that remove my square of bubble wrap and remove my drywall tape we call this chip rock tape in Australia and let's pull that print and see what we've got oh it's luscious it's got so much ink on it it's beautiful uh, paint on it it's beautiful okay let's give it some love with the bow and get to all the corners and we don't have any stencils on the top of there so you know we, this is going to come up nice and clean I hope all right, we peel her back. And we're ready to add the next layer. Now that's looking pretty cool. I like that a lot. I'm going to leave it sitting there for now. On the desk. For the next layer, I'm going to make an orangey colour by adding this rose red get this one down as well this is a heavier body paint it's not the fluid paint this is a heavy body and I'm going in with a clean brayer brayering on some pink it's a really vivid pink it's nice and we should get a little bit of an orange happening with that yellow underneath it and that's kind of cool I like that right to the edges again and one thing I do like to do now I've gone to the edges with some pretty gummy paint is to mop it up with a damp cloth because this is where you'll get your overprinting happening 
it gets tends to get stuck in the edges so it's it's a good idea to always give it a bit of a clean up i love this shape on my i'm trying to remember where the other shapes went this shape on my ashtray and i'm going to add some texture with my comb i just want to wiggle oh i do like that i do like that a lot Let's see if we can get some plastic wrap under it oh that's cool oh that's cool i like that so here's more of our design going in a bit more bubble wrap lift that up and i'm going to pat some more at the top a little bit off center so that it's not, not everything's not perpendicular or horizontal add my egg shapes so this is my egg shapes and i want to get them in there i'm thinking about where they will look best i like this right here so i'm dropping them down here i can do two hands i'm going to drop them in and let them sit and just press hopefully we'll get a good impression I'm going to make a shape over here that's pretty straight up and down. Pat it in. So I've got this interesting thing happening here. Wash my hands. I have some hand sanitizer here because I like to work with clean hands. Clean hands, clean hands, clean hands. Can't stress it enough when printmaking. Okay, and we're coming down on our second layer. Bring in our barren. It's quite wet, so I don't want to press too hard or the paper could tear. It's a bit of a wrinkled paper. That's going to happen because it's a very fine paper. It's just cartridge, it's not watercolour. But that's okay, if it doesn't tear, I'm happy. The wrinkles won't bother me, as long as I can get a good pull. And let's see, oh wow, here we go. Beautiful, I'm gonna lift that right up off the table because it is so good, I do not want to smear it. I'm gonna show you how that came out. How beautiful is that and it's a really good transfer so we've got some really nice shapes happening in there it's really colorful it's really bright we've got some paler colors in there too we've got like a pink coming through i'll just move it out of the sunlight so you can see that a little bit clearer and for me that is a really lovely print now it's not finished i'm going to let it dry and come back to it so that's just layer number two that was two layers now often the ghost is even better so let's pull the ghost and i'm going to line up my registration without the hinge this time and line it up by eyeballing it with the edge of the other paper it should be perfect let's open to our edge here we'll see how we go anyway it's going to be not bad at all Press down, feel for the corners with your hands, pay particular attention to the corners, the edges, so you don't miss rubbing any of it in, and grab your red baron. You can use a spoon if you don't have a baron, but I just love this tool. It's one of my favorite tools in my entire arsenal of art supplies. And I have done a lot of printing, so this red baron has served me well let's see what we got oh wow yum 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 so there's our ghost that's really vibrant and it's kind of saucy i do like it a lot so i'll be letting that dry and i'll come back and i'll do another layer i really like that a lot a lot happening so i'm really tempted to get a third ghost off that there's so much interesting stuff there 
I need another layer and then I need to let it set and then I need to pull from that. So the next colour I might do is, it has to be pale, so I might go for the lavender, which is really nice. It's yummy and I think it's going to work really well with that. So let's roll this out. With our next clean bra over here, roll this out lightly. And I've got way too much paint on there, so I'm going to discharge a lot of that paint onto my newsprint over here. It's way too thick. I got a little enthusiastic there, guys. <laughs> and I'm going to discharge over here. I'm going to get it right to the ends first, get some nice thick paint right to the edges so we get some nice edges happening in this print but I really want to pull that some of that back it's way too thick it's going to take way too long to dry so we want it to be thinner This is where you want something smooth too. You want it to be smooth. You don't want these lines in it because they will really show up. So you want something that looks clean like that. We lay down our paper and leave it for five minutes and come back and see if we can pull a print from that. I'm going to spray some water under the plate. Register a print. Find it's easier if you get the first level down and then you just let it drop. And I'm going to leave that because I want that paint to pull off the design that's underneath it. So I'm going to leave that for five minutes. Make sure there's good contact all the way around. I'm going to uh, clean up some of my brayers while I'm waiting. So what I'll do here is just discharge onto the paper, onto the newsprint. And then I have my little bucket of water here. And I'm just going to drop them in that. Close that up. Pick it up and get a fresh piece. <laughs> And discharge some more. Ah, see, it's coming off nicely. Okay, so while we're waiting for paint to dry, I'm going to just move this away and I'll show you how I design my cutouts. So this is this is my crappy piece of paper that I've already gotten dirty, so I'm happy to use it. Just grab a pencil, something like this. This is my plate, very wonky edges, and that's cool. I want to make some masks around my plate. Probably some circles, semicircles. I like egg shapes. I really do like the old egg shape. I think the egg shape is the iconic one for me at the moment. I do like eggs, which is sort of rounded triangles. And I'd like to do a line through the center. So I'm gonna come up and have a shape like that. that dissects my piece. Now these shapes I'm going to cut bigger because I want them to be able to sit off the edge so I can flick them off my plate more easily. We want to make them bigger than the actual plate. That's pretty cool. I like those shapes a lot. One, two, three, four shapes. Like it, simple, done. So I'm going to use my Reeves tracing paper A3 pad. It's 90 GSM, it's not particularly heavy, but it is a plastic coated paper and it's easy to cut. And all I'm going to do is trace this onto my tracing paper. So I want my eggs. Hopefully I will get several uses out of these same masks, which will mean that my work has a cohesive look. 
Um, I think, you know, it's important that you follow a theme. Eggs are my theme at the moment. I'll just show you some egg work that I've been doing. So I've made these little paintings. You can see the gold in them. Gold's a bit of a theme too. Of oh, This is called nest eggs. And there's a gold cord weaving under, around, through and behind the eggs to create the nest shape. I have some more. I have another one here, which I really like. This one here again, egg shapes. So this is coming into this work. And I like the fact that I can bring something from one work into a completely different work, a different medium. And this is a good tip to leave them bigger because it makes the reusing of them a lot more simple. In fact, I'm going to give this a really big line all the way up there. I'm just going to cut them out. So I'll grab my big scissors. I like big shears for this. I like big shapes and I like big scissors. And I'm just going to cut out my tracing paper. So I've been working with a composition on roughly the size of my plate so I can understand how I want this to look. I've thought about it beforehand and I have decided that this is going to improve the next layer. Now I can use these two ways. I can use them as a mask or I can use them as a stencil. So I'm going to cut around carefully so that I can use all the pieces if I need to. And this Architects tracing paper is inexpensive. It's reasonably easy to clean. You'll get several uses out of these stencils and masks. So that's a bonus. I want this edge to be like rounded, if anything. Uh, okay. And I've still got my design drawn here so I, I will know how to lay everything out on the plate. And I'm going with the idea of dividing the plate with this centre line. Oh, I'm not happy with that little piece. It's a bit rough there. But you can see how having these shapes and masks and this is going to be tricky because we're right in the middle. <laughs> That's okay, we can work around that. You can just cut a little slice into here and then do your shape. You've still got roughly a mask there anyway. If you wanted to, you could use a knife and a cutting mat. Got my beautiful egg shapes. Got my composition ready. I'm looking at, the, at this as a finished piece rather than just bits and pieces that I've randomly placed around the page. Again, this one I'm going to cut just a slice in there and cut around it. There's various things that you can make your masks and stencils from. Um, you can use mylar. I find it's really sharp. And it, the thing about mylar is it's invisible on your plate <laughs> unless you get the frosted. Frosted is better. You can use plastic. You can use actual stencil plastic, which you can get to. Um, but I love using Architrix, Architects Tracing Paper. It's affordable, it's easy. It is reusable up to a point. I don't know how long these would last over time. I'm going to cut this all the way to the edge. And I will probably round off the bits there too a little bit. I'm going to cut. I want to keep this as a mask, so I'm going to cut around here with my scissors and I'm being careful so here's our design Here's our mask and our stencil, and there's our composition. So these pieces all fit back in there. And they can be used in various ways. And I'm going to look and see what I get with this pull. It's been five minutes, so I need to pull this paper off. I don't want to leave it too long. 
Let's see what happens if we're getting a transfer. Oh, wow. Pretty good. And what I do is if there's a little bit stuck to the plate, just go back and rub it. You might get a bit more. This is very clean. Look how smooth she is. Mm -mm. There's virtually nothing, nothing left on the plate. Wow, 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 look at that. So detailed. Okay, I am ready for these masks to go on next and see what we can get. Not a skerrick on the plate. Huh. Well, that was good, that was lucky. Clean things up as you go. Clean up your plate, keep your plate in place so that you can register again. I don't know why this is on the plate. We need to get that off. We don't want that contaminating our piece. Anything else you can clean up. How good was that? Oh, it just feels so good when you get a really clean pool like that. And the secret is to leave it a good five minutes or even more, depending on your weather conditions. We've got all our pieces back in place. And I will keep this drawing so that when I'm using this again, I know where everything fits. Like that, you could number them. I don't think that would help me though. I think I'm more visual, so I want to put it together like a jigsaw puzzle really, and get our very graphic shapes on here in black. This is the Reeves Artist Quality Heavy Body Paint. It's not fluid, it's heavy body. I will also sometimes use printing ink. I'll often use printing ink, to be honest. I do a lot of printing. I do liner cut printing as well and I've done lithographs, I've done all sorts of printing techniques. So I tend to change it up after a while just so that I am I continue to learn how things work. So let's mask off our areas. So this Reeves paint's performing really well. Um, everything's doing what it's meant to do. That lift and roll technique get it pretty smooth unless you want to rough it up you can rough it up if you want to so that it's not a hundred percent smooth let's rough it up okay <laughs> and for this I want to mirror the um, the combing so I'm going to put this through the paint and I'm going to try and get it to go sort of like a very regular pattern because that's just what I feel like So using the comb really helps give you some textures there. You can even, you know, if you're careful, you can come in and fiddle with it a bit. All right, that's looking good. I like that a lot. Okay, let's lay some masks onto the plate. Or well, these, these exposed shapes are going to print because we've masked off the rest of it with our paper. And so, this is a bit trickier because we have this gappy bit here, but we might be able to get this down. I'm just going to be careful the way I lay this. I want a, even more of a gap than I have on my drawing. This is that first print. I'm bringing this in and I'm going to add this layer over the top and see what we come up with. And I'm going to try and do the registration exactly as we had it before. All right, I'm going to commit to this and see what happens. Hopefully the tracing paper hasn't curled up too much. All right, and we're going to need the baron for this. We need to get really into those nooks and crannies.
and I'm going to pull this back and have a peek. Let's sneak a peek and see what's happening. Ooh, 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 so good, so good. Oh my gosh, I want more, I want more, but I want more, okay. <laughs> this is the addictive part of printmaking when you have this exciting result. Let's see what we get. <gasps> looks good, guys, it looks really good. Okay, let's see what we got. <gasps> da, 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 da. Oh man, there's a bit of misregistration here, but that's okay, I can live with that. I'm going to tear it straight back up and see what we've got. <gasps> wow, look at that. Look at that. Misregistration on the bottom, you can see there, but it's not a deal breaker. Look how beautifully those lines connect the piece. It's wow. <laughs> really like it. Really, really like it. So happy with that. Okay, next print. I don't want to tear it, so I'm going to take it off carefully. Yes, it might get reused. And place it down there so you can see the patterns there because ah, they've been printed on too. So there's our mask. Yay, yay. <laughs> there's our mask. And what I want to do here is, I don't know if it's, if it's going to be wet enough. I'm actually going to give it a spray, a spritz of water. So I'm going to place this one here and I can see where they need to go. I can see where that print captured the images and they don't have to be exact. See how that curls? That's the only drawback with this stuff. If I get the thicker stuff, it probably won't curl on me as much. And whoa, there's another mask. There's another one up here. This one. And our other mask, which is here, this big up egg shape. Okay, it goes this way. You can see the outlines where they are. And you, we're going to get a, a secondary line, which I think is going to be beautiful. Let's get this on. Clean hands. Ah. <laughs> Do not curl up on me. Yeah, I'm going to go for the thicker architecture paper next. It probably won't curl up as much. It's very hot here in Sydney. So let's get this on. Do, I'm going to do a reg, eyeball registration without using the tape. Oh, this is feeling good. I can feel some moisture under it. So there's still something in that paint that will be left to give us an impression. So I tend to interchange the terms masks and stencils. You know, um, it depends really how you want to use them. Uh, there's probably a correct term for one being the mask, one being the stencil, but I would think this is more a stencil shape in itself, but how it reacts on the paper again is different. really pressing into the edges and you want to make good contact. Ooh. Peel these off. This is the second print. This is the ghost print. I really like that at this point. So what, whatever we're going to add to it must add value. Very nice print. I uh, would like some black in there. Bring in some bubble wrap across here and here to connect these two pieces up. So from here, or maybe it's the uh, drywall tape that I'll use, but I want a black section here and a black section there. So let's see how we can create that. Uh, 
So I'm going to roll this directly onto my tape, which is a different way of transferring onto the plate. Because I only want these strips. Lift that up. What a nice pattern. Ooh. Uh, did I get this wide enough? I believe I did. Yeah, I think that's wide enough. I'm going to put that on. <laughs> messy, messy, messy. Okay, um, clean that up. I do not want my dirty hands. And I'm going to use a sheet of paper. Uh, this newsprint would be perfect. And tear some off. And just pick up that paint to minimise the mess uh, on the top of it there. So I can press it. I actually just want to press it in. Press that into the plate, right? We'll get a little bit of transfer, but that's okay. So that, oh wow, that's what I wanted. Exactly what I wanted, okay. And we want the um, bubble, bubble wrap. Why am I forgetting that name? I don't know. <laughs> it's easy enough to remember, surely. And I want to do the same with this. I'll just mask that off so it's not quite so messy. I'm going to grab my roller, which has plenty of black on it still. I do believe it does, and it's coming out really well. You don't need to push too hard on this, or you'll break the bubbles. But I'm going to need a bit more. That's not quite enough black. It will be too splotchy. So I'm just going to mix it on the bubble wrap. Oh, let's see how this goes. Okay, oh no, that's not good. That's not a good idea. Look at that big splodge I got there. No, 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 no. Next time I will roll it out first. We're going to have some splodgy bits, but hey, um, I have I have a fix for that. I do believe I have a fix for that. So what I'm going to do is grab my, yep, grab these guys and pull that back a little bit so it's not quite so, ugh. <laughs> Same with that piece there. This is why these Q-tips are so good. You can pick up individual bits. In fact, I need another one of those. Here they are. And just wipe some of your paint off when you see you've got too much blobbing in one particular area or not enough in another. And I'm just going to do the same. I'm going to print this down. Like so. Press it in. So this partial printing technique's great um, as long as I can get it registered with the um, final print. It's just going to add a layer without having to use a whole stack more paint or you know, worry about covering up the pretty design that we have on it. Oh no, not enough. So we need to do that a bit more. I need a bit more paint on it. I'm going to redo. And I can redo at this point because I haven't put the paper on. And I'm going to roll with my brayer so that I have a nice, there we go, pick up some good quality paint there. There we go. So in fact, having a lot of paint on is going to work better, I think. That's better. And my hands are filthy, so I'm going to have to be careful here. I have black all over me, so never mind. <laughs> I'm going to try and get that back in the same spot, kind of. Look at those fingers. I'm going to wash these in the sink. Be right back. So I want to lay that down over here so that I don't get dirty hands. But I want to be able to press it in. And hopefully the other one hasn't dried up too much. I think it's going to be okay because I'm going to spritz it with some water. Oh, look at that. Yum. That looks great. And spritz it because it's starting to dry a bit. Did get a little bit of water on there it's still drying off it's taking ages but i really want to get into this part here and i can almost just drop that paper on top because it's really only two strips wow that's going to be nice it's going to have quite a bit of paint on it you can see the paint starting to come through the back of the paper so we're definitely going to get a good impression here of those two strips that I've just added. And the paint may, uh, the plate may be a little wet too, that might be why. So I'm just gonna let that sit because I do not want to tear the paper. Let's have a look, we'll just sneak peek it. Oh yeah, it can come up, it can come, come up. No, nope, this one can't. This one's not really registering the way I wanted it to. It's very dry and I may even 
work in progress, spray that with some water to try and reactivate it and see what happens. So this may solve the problem. Look at that, we seem to be getting a bit of more of a transfer. We only need to transfer these black strips, that's all we need. What's happening on this side? This side's transferring really well. Can we get this to work? Uh, we've got the blob. <laughs> we've got the blobby bit now. I don't want to go through the paper. It's wet. It's wet, it's wet, it's wet, so I don't want to tear it. This will be interesting to see how it turns out. Let's have a look. Way too black, unfortunately. Yeah, way too black. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to come back and I'm going to try and doctor it somehow. I'm not happy with it, so I need to fix it. So I'm going to clean that off. So I'll spray it. It was just a little bit too much black paint. I went too thick with it and that's just learning curve. I think it's got some lovely curves in it. So what I want to do is bring in some strips. So I'm going to cut thinner strips and I'm going to make them deliberately wavy. I do not want straight lines anywhere here. I want them to be wavy edged and a little bit organic. And I think I need uh, maybe at least three strips for the composition to work. I'll have a look on the print itself so I can judge what it might look like. Let's see what composition we want to add in here. A third, a third, a third is a bit too precious so I think I want to work like this so we have two strips that way and one that way oh yes oh yes that's going to be my composition and I think that's going to if it works it will look great it'll be gold so we've got to get these painted up with some gold and I have my Reeves acrylic here I think that's going to work I think that'll be nice so we'll see how we go we're going to lay that on the plate in that fashion so we're going to have, and remember it's going to reverse. The reverse image. So I'll be laying my print from this direction. Yes, 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 that will work. So what I want to do with these three strips is get some gold paint on them. I'm going to do that on the newsprint. Putting them bubbly side up. So I have just some Reeves palette paper. I hate this hole in it, don't see the point of it. I wish it didn't have the hole in it, but that's what I'm going to use to roll out my paint. Because it is plastic coated. You know, they're a different kind of paint to a regular acrylic. They have a different formula. But the results are worth it when you get something really, really gorgeous. So I'm going to just print this off now with my fingers all the way. And just get that onto the plate. We decided we were going to go this way, didn't we? Yeah, that was the way. Get that down. And this is like a tap, tap, tap. You really can't do much more than tap, tap, tap with it. And I've got gold everywhere, but this is drying almost instantly. I don't know how this will work because it's drying so fast. Okay, we've got our second piece. Same again, tap, tap, tap into it. It may be too subtle, I don't know. Only one way for us to find out. So we want our second and third pieces were over here. Tapping in. Maybe I should have left that on there. I think I'm going to maybe leave that piece on so it doesn't dry. Roll out some more. So we've got a base to work with there. And I should have put that upside down. Putting braid upside down means it stays cleaner. 
Okay. Next piece up here. Pat, pat, pat. So transfer onto the plate. I feel like I need a better transfer than that, so I might give it a bit of a press. Rather than a pat, I'm really going to press it in. And I think this is almost dry. We'll see what happens. I really want to add a very light mist of water because it's really hot here and see what we get. So the registration here really only needs to be top and bottom. Like so. And press. Who knows what we'll get. I hope there's enough paint on there to give us some kind of an impression. Only time will tell us, and it might leave, need to leave it on a little bit so that it can pick it up. It's very subtle, so I'm really going to give it a good rub. And sneak a peek. Needs a bit more. A bit more love. And a bit more love. Okay, that's given, it's cut back on the black, which is what I wanted. So you can see, oh, I'll get it out of the sunshine. There's a bit of shimmer on it there. You can see if I tip it and tilt it, you can see the gold is actually, that's not too bad. I don't hate it quite as much as I did before. So what I might do is I'm going to do some more gold on it, but this time I'm going to paint on the gold with my roller so I'm going to choose roughly the same spots I can see where it's picked up the gold and this is radical this is a really radical approach but I don't know what it's going to look like it might look terrible so it's definitely not going to be a bubble wrap effect I'm trying to get some of those hard edges out of there Use the brayer, use the brayer, use the brayer. Pick up some more paint from the palette. Ah, there we go. Because it's a plastic paint palette, the paint doesn't actually dry on it for a very long time, so it does give you some wiggle room. I don't like that part there. So I'm now going to bring in my catalyst brush. Okay. So I'm going to shave back the edges like this to get a shape that is a bit more understandable. I'm only going to do it on the same side. So on the right hand side of them all. I like this jagged edge. Let's get it on there and see what happens. Uh, here we go again. There's still a lot of that gold on the plate. I really want to pick up as much of it as I can. This side too will be the same. Got to pick it up, got to pick it up, got to pick it up. So really give it some love. And I'm actually going to bring in my trusty Red Baron and really press that, really press it in. Really get our good contact that we want. See if that can give us something more than a glimmer of gold we want something that's going to knock our socks off okay now the registration of it is off yes we knew that at the beginning but wow we're getting some gold <laughs> we are really getting some gold here sorry i moved the camera okay that's better that's better isn't it look at that we've got some real shine on there and look at the effect of that catalyst brush creating those marks around the gold we've still got some gold with the registration, what I'll do is I will actually trim this down and put a mat around it and then that's not an issue because we now have a successful print. So you can see the shine on it, you can see it's got contrast, it's interesting. All right, let's go back to our final piece. And this is definitely 
my favourite of all the prints. I think it is definitely the most successful in terms of composition, in terms of transfer, in terms of registration. And I love the effect of that comb. I love the effect of the subtle bubble wrap. I love the effect of those circles that show up in it, the smaller amounts of bubble wrap. I love the color, it's very joyful. To me, this is a very much outback colors that I would associate with the Australian outback. So I think I've captured a feeling within this print. I'm extremely proud of this one. So out of a printing session where we printed three prints, there's still one to go that's drying. I'm going to show you a little bit of how I'm going to print directly onto that piece rather than using the gel plate as a fix it method. I like this. I like the way this has come out, but we're losing our shapes here. So all I'm going to do is reinstate our shapes with some simple lines using a sharpie and there should be another shape here that seems to have gone missing this one in the corner i'm going to reinstate them when you do this you need to be confident with your line work don't fuss with it too much and then we've got our other shape coming here which has lost its sense of where it is and i'm just going to fill that back in Be confident. And now we have a print that makes sense. It actually has a top layer, a mid layer, and a base layer, just by adding the Sharpie lines. Now that technically doesn't make it a print now, it's now a mixed media piece, but I had a real lot of fun making this. And I think that is sort of adding to the charm of the composition. So that's a fix for that one. This one is more of a very subtle cheat fix on this one. <laughs> so this one, I'm going to add a few black dots all the way up. That's it. Just add a few more dots, a few more, nothing too serious. So that this piece reads as a little bit more coherent and not so much as a blob but it becomes a part of the composition and continues the line of the composition all the way to the edge, just with some Sharpie dots. And you know, for the purists among us, I know this again, turns it into a mixed media piece. It is no longer a print because printing is all about the process. And I've changed the process by adding something at the end, but I do believe it's giving so much to the print that it's worth that sacrifice. It's still very wet. The pa paper on it is extremely wet. That's because I spr spritzed the plate with some water. So the paper has taken up a lot of that water. It's still drying and I've got it in the full sun. It's not dry yet. So it'll take a little while longer to dry. Now you can see how we can actually bring some of them down the bottom too. And we now have this element that looks as though it's intentional I can even do some big dark ones down here, which I think will really help ground this piece really well. Just add to that composition, add to the sense of purpose and strength in it, just by adding those dots in. And now rather than looking like, oh, we you know, misprinted, didn't really work. In fact, I really like it so much. I'm gonna put some more dots in to just give it a bit more strength. Just dotting it out with a Sharpie. It's a cheats tip <laughs> as I said it's now a mixed media piece that's okay with me because the result is something that really pleases me now that's given the whole composition a lot more balance and I like it this is now a print that I really like and of course here is our very successful print of the day I couldn't be happier with this a little bit of misregistration yes but it doesn't really matter. It's a gel plate. It's got wonky edges. That is reading as a single line rather than a misregister, depending on <laughs> your point of view. This looks great from all angles too. If I show that as 
portrait orientation if I move it around. You tell me which way you like the best. Okay, this is uh, version one. <laughs> version two. Version three looks like a funny face to me, so it's not one of my favorites. Version three and version four. Love, love, love it. Thanks for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Thanks for sticking through the whole video with me. It has been a lot of fun to do and there'll be a lot more gel print making videos to follow this one. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.